Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Barry, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm talking about glyphosate toxicity. And what is glyphosate? Well, this is a commonly used herbicide. You probably have heard about it. It's also used as a desiccant in the farming industry, and its chemical name is N-phosphonylmethylglycine. Now, the way that this was discovered in terms of using this in our modern farming for genetically modified crops was the fact that they were experimenting with a glyphosate glyphosate and as the story goes there was one type of weed where everything around it was wiped out by the glyphosate and didn't survive this one weed was able to survive and withstand the glyphosate so they took the components of that weed and genetically modified it with some common crops which I'll get to in just a moment and that's how this industry really was blooming because now the use of that genetically modified crop would be glyphosate resistant. This is commonly found as one of the ingredients in Roundup. So that is a common brand name that uses glyphosate and the Roundup can actually be even more toxic than the glyphosate on its own because of the other chemical components that are mixed up in that Roundup. And in certain countries, this was banned and for use for cosmetic reasons of your lawn and things, it really depends on where you live as to if this is allowed in that region or not and it's pretty you know frightening to know that every year 1.8 million tons of glyphosate are used just in the USA alone and it does end up in 90% of the food supply so this is something that you really have to do your due diligence when you're trying to get healthier Glyphosate toxicity is something that is a big problem with our overall health, the health of our microbiome. It's something that I cover in other videos to so make sure that you check them out. Now, some plants, as I said, have been genetically engineered to be resistant to the glyphosate. And the most common crops that contain this resistance are soybeans, corn, cotton, as well as canola. So canola is rapeseed oil. It, it was Canadian, you know, the, my Canadian roots. Uh, that's where we get the can in canola. And this is something that it, a lot of people don't realize that they are, you know, subjecting themselves to this herbicide, to the glyphosate and that toxicity. And some of the correlations now that have come out in the past few years in terms of the carcinogenicity of the glyphosate is a problem. So the, the Glyphosate was really under scrutiny in 2015. Now, before 2015, a lot of people were talking about the toxicity concerns about the glyphosate, but it wasn't until 2015 that the IARC, so the International Agency for Research on Cancer, determined that it was a possible carcinogen. So this is when the lawsuit started to happen and, and more than 42,000 people have now filed lawsuits, especially specifically about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which came out in the court documents that this was the correlation with the you know, carcinogen effect of the glyphosate in terms of that toxicity. So it's something that definitely you know and there are ongoing legal cases about the correlation with the glyphosate and people's you know not doing so well with their health so this is something that i definitely wanted to make sure that people are aware and it is in, hidden in so many foods so even some non-gmo crops do have this glyphosate toxicity so things such as oats this was in the news in terms of breakfast cereals so oats as well as wheat barley some of the legumes like chickpeas and lentils can have very high levels of glyphosate and the reason isn't necessarily because it's grown with the glyphosate but the glyphosate was determined to be a great desiccant so it dries out crops so the worst thing that can happen for a farmer is that there's a heavy rainfall just before they are harvesting their crop and that's when they learn that glyphosate will help to dry things out so right before harvest so if you think of the toxicity levels right before harvest the glyphosate is sprayed on on the crop to prevent the mold from setting in and and destroying that crop so it is a big problem it's something that we definitely have to be more aware of now in terms of toxicity levels and you know being banned in some countries in the US and in Canada it is legal to use glyphosate 
and in most other countries in the world. However, some countries have banned the use of glyphosate. So in 2014, the legislature of the Netherlands prohibited the glyphosate from being sold to consumers to use in their own homes. As of June 30th, 2021, this year, the sale and use of glyphosate in Vietnam has been banned. And the German government most recently also announced in 2019 that the use of glyphosate will be prohibited starting at the end of the year 2023. So that should give you a little bit of an indication that, you know, certain countries in different parts of the world definitely are on top of this toxicity problem with glyphosate. I really want you to do your due diligence and look at my other videos as to, you know, the sources of glyphosate that you may not have even thought about that you could be ingesting on a daily basis. So today we talked about glyphosate toxicity and what is glyphosate. I hope that you have some questions or some comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Be sure to share this video. It's very important information for your friends and your family. Please give me a big thumbs up as well. I truly appreciate all of your great feedback. And if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe. Click that bell to turn on your notifications so you're always notified of my newest and latest uploads, which happens every single day of the week. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today. Thank you.